My name is Sean Ali, and I'm an interventional cardiologist with Novant Heart and Vascular Institute in Charlotte, North Carolina. I want to say a big thank you to the CVI directors for the opportunity to uh, give this talk on therapy with deficient RIMS as part of the digital CVI 2020. I have no disclosures for this talk. Yes, these are commonly encountered in clinical practice. Uh, a good understanding of the anatomy of an atrial receptor defect is important as you explore closure of these defects. Uh, the cartoon on the left shows uh, the unforced view of an ASD and shows the, uh, the rims around the defect. There are six uh, ASD rims, uh, technically. Uh, and, and as you go around the ASD, from the SBC side of things, you have an SBC rim, you have a posterior rim, an IBC rim, an aortic valve rim, aortic rim, and then a superior rim. The, the aortic and superior rim uh, uh, form what we call the retroaortic rim. Uh, usually, when you have an IBC uh, on uh, uh, posterior rim deficiency, these are the more technically challenging ASDs to really uh, fix. Uh, so that can be really, really tricky. Um, here we have a 3D uh, unforced view of an ASD uh, showing the relationship of the aorta, the ASBC, and the IBC uh, uh, with this, uh, what looks to be a fairly large size defect. Um, you will define an ASD with deficient rims as uh, rims of less than five millimeters or absent rims. Uh, as, as shown in this uh, still frame here, we have a large sized ASD and there's a deficient retroaortic rim. There's no piece of tissue around the aorta at all. Uh, this can be closed, but uh, the device is gonna have to split around the aorta and uh, it can be, uh, it can lead to complications down, down the road as we'll describe later. Uh, but the most common side of deficiency is retroaortic, uh, which is the absence of the anterior superior rim of the ASD. And uh, we can see this in about 45% of patients with ASD, so it's fairly common. Usually, these are usually moderate to large size or large sized ASDs. Here we see the superior rim. Uh, we have uh, a nice rim uh, around the SVC. Uh, usually, uh, this is uh, not an, uh, a common occurrence of a deficient superior rim. So, we usually, we have a decent sized superior rim on most of our ASDs. Uh, the inferior rims can sometimes be absent. And when this is absent, there can be a compromise uh, if you do put a device in, on the uh, AV valves. Yeah, here we see a cartoon showing potential placement of a device where you see that the device really rests on the inferior rim. And if you have a deficient inferior rim, then the device may impinge on the uh, uh, AV valves and cause more problems. The retroaortic rim, like we talked about, is the most common side of uh, uh, deficiency. Um, most times, these defects can still be closed. Here we have an ASD with a really small retroaortic rim. I wouldn't say this is deficient, but it's definitely uh, around five millimeters. It's really, really bordering on being deficient. And uh, these are commonly seen in, in, in practice, and they are successfully closed uh, with transcatheter techniques. Uh, but when you do have a deficient retroaortic rim, you have to oversize the device, and that may lead to increased risk of device erosion. Uh, erosion will typically occur on the atrial roof behind the aorta. So one has to really watch out for this, and patients have to be followed uh, clinically. Closure of ASDs with deficient rims can be technically challenging. Um, the closure of an ASD with a deficient retroaortic rim can usually be accomplished. Uh, when you do have two or more deficient rims, uh, you either should leave this to really someone that is an expert in this field or refer them for surgical closure as the risks uh, may be higher. The challenge of closure of these defects is usually misalignment of the discs with protrusion of the discs into the, uh, through the defect into the right atrium as seen in this uh, picture. Deployment techniques. There are several techniques that have been described in literature to try and close these large sized or technically challenging ASDs with deficient rims. You could use a pulmonary vein technique utilizing either the left or right pulmonary veins. You could use a left atrial roof technique, a balloon assisted technique, a dilator assisted technique. You could use a host of sheath and also the tulip technique. And I'll talk about some of these techniques. 
the pulmonary vein technique is fairly common uh, where you basically uh, partially deploy the device in the left upper pulmonary or right upper pulmonary veins and basically stretch the rest of the device across the uh, right atrium until the left, this jumps into the uh, uh, left atrium and you have a different seal. It basically gives, allows you to orient your discs appropriately parallel to the septum so that um, um, you can have a, a, a really nice deployment. Uh, and this is shown in this uh, picture here. Uh, the left atrial roof technique is also similar. Uh, you extrude the left atrial disc into the um, left atrial roof and then retract uh, the rest of the dev device by unsheathing it and uh, deploying the, the right side and hopefully you can just uh, pull the left atrial disc uh, back into the, uh, towards the septum and it will be aligned. Uh, you have to use self-centering devices in this regard, obviously, because you really want uh, uh, alignment of your discs. The balloon assisted technique has been described. Uh, you basically use your sizing balloon as a body where it allows, uh, prevents the left disc uh, from prolapsing into the right atrium. Uh, and obviously, as you deploy the, de the defects, you can then retract your balloon and complete the closure. Uh, the host of sheet is a common, commonly used sheet. I, I like this sheet very, very much so. It has two posterior curves and an angle tip to keep the uh, aortic edge of the disc posterior and parallel to the septum. Uh, it comes in 10, 11, or 12 French sizes, so it allows us to use the, uh, bigger devices. Uh, it has a radio peak distal tip, so you know exactly where the tip of the, uh, of the sheet is. Uh, it's very useful in large areas it's with uh, deficient anterior rim. One has to be careful when, uh, when you use the sheath to avoid air entrapment, uh, but it's a really nice sheath that can be used to uh, close large sized ASs with deficient rims. If you don't have uh, an host of sheath, you can also uh, shape your sheath uh, with this kind of coverture uh, uh, to get that uh, parallel, uh, um, uh, the device parallel to the septum uh, uh, to aid deployment. In conclusion, ASDs with deficient rims are commonly encountered in clinical practice. Transcatheter closure can be technically challenging, but possible. Several techniques have been developed to aid closure, and with uh, uh, follow uh, with good techniques, most most of the time you can definitely close these defects. Uh, thank you for 